Hallo Heimir. I might have said that wrong. Sorry for the people of Iceland. But um, <laughs> welcome to the very next episode of Help Me YPN. First of all, everybody give it up for our sponsors right here. We love you. And today with us, we have Justin Bush from Cross Country Mortgage. Justin, tell us about all the wonderful products that Cross Country is offering right now. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Kevin. And uh, yes, again, Justin Bush with Cross Country Mortgage. Um, as far as products go, we are, of course, direct lenders. But right now, because of where the market is, we're certainly brokering a lot of stuff as well. So direct stuff going to be your conventional FHA, VA, um, as well as our in-house uh, one-time close renovation and construction products. Again, that's direct lending, jumbo as well. Um, but the, what we're really seeing the majority of right now is a lot of debt service-based loans, um, hard money, fix and flips, certainly a boatload of foreign nationals. People love to invest in this market. As crazy as our economy may be right now, a lot of economies are much worse and people want to get their money into the United States. So that said, you name it, we pretty much do it when it comes to residential lending. We do have some five plus unit products, but primarily we are resi lenders. So yes, everybody in residential, please hit up Justin if you need a residential loan. Um, maybe even a commercial loan every now and again. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. We'll see. We'll take <laughs> right. a look at all of it though. He'll and take honestly, a look. Well, listen, we'll put you, point you in the right direction, even if it's not really a perfect fit for us. And he's a team player. So, um, that's what we're talking about today is when to form a team or running a team if you've already started one. But before we talk about running a team, um, let's start about let's start to talk about the genesis of teams. Um, what is a good reason for starting a team? And then if you want to as well, talk about what's not a good reason to start a team. Terrell, go ahead and start, man. Oh, man. Put me on the spot. Okay, great. Um, good reason to start a team. One is to allow you to be able to grow your business. Um, as a single agent, at some point, once you get to a certain volume and amount of clients, it's hard for you to manage that yourself. So you want to be able to start delegating and trusting that in other agents. But then also a good reason to start a team is to be able to have a, an effect on other agents, especially agents starting out in the business where they can actually learn underneath you and actually shadow you and then you're just doing good service in that, in that standpoint. So that would be my good reason, bad reason for a team. Um, mm. Uh, got me a little stumped on that one. Bad reason for a team. It's tough to say because, like, the team setting has really allowed me to kind of diversify my business over time with allowing me to do other things. So it's, it's really tough to say a bad reason to start a team. Um, I don't know. Maybe somebody else will tell you on that one. Bad reason to start a team because you're greedy and you want to make money and you want to make what money. What do you mean? That was people. my reason for starting a team. No. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. No. Oh, come on. Listen, if you're growing, right? As oh, a yeah, person, always. you have a lot of business coming in mm -hmm. and you see the potential in expanding that. And you also see new people who are hungry, who you can inspire to grow. Mm -hmm. So just because you want to make money, if, if you're not bringing in the business and you can't help them grow and you just want to make money, you, how are you going to help them? How are you going to grow and how are you going to make money? I said it's one of the good reasons. That's all I'm saying is that the reality is we all I think it's a bad we, reason. We all, I think know. it's well I think when you go into the mentality of I'm just building a team because I just want to make more money. No, you go into a team because you see the potential of what you've built and the way that you've done your business and you see that if you can multiply yourself that you can create that same experience for that many more people. Oh, so I definitely can, wouldn't argue with that. I mean, so, that, that I'm in agreement with, but that also does translate to making more money. Yeah, but that's right? not the reason. The reason is that <laughs> the reason is that you know that your mind has so much capacity and that there's so much potential in people and that you can develop them and it's inspiring to watch them grow and that's the reason it's not because they're gonna make me more money it's because that person is, is gonna make more money for themselves and for me okay yeah so uh, disclaimer I'll, I'll, no, but listen that's actually okay. was part of my notes for today is that building a team doesn't really translate to more money especially not at first mm -hmm. and so certainly you do have to have that mentality which is it actually is going to get worse before it gets better um, being a leader is not something that it's a very natural thing in a sense of business. Um, and failures are certainly imminent. Um, the way those failures actually play out and the results of those failures really is what defines you and your team over time. Um, and I'll certainly be able to touch on more of those as we go, but yeah. I'll, I'll, as, I'll spin as it down the road as, there. As, as long as you look at the failures as lessons, I would add that. Marcelo, you want to add something? Well, I mean, look, I always think that starting a team is a good re is a good thing. But I also think that it's important that I first define, in my opinion, what a team is. 
uh, a team doesn't mean having showing agents or having listing agents or having a transaction coordinator or having an assistant. When you start out in this industry, you can either choose to join someone's team or you can start your own team. And just to, if, if I use my personal experience, my team when I first started was the vendors and professionals that I surrounded myself with to help me learn how to get started in this business. So it came down to, you know, I was very young. I was 18, 19 years old when I started. So naturally what I remember saying to myself was, okay, if I am going to have any chance at winning listings and working with buyers, the least I can do until I figure out what I'm doing is align myself with lenders, attorneys that have been doing this for longer than I have that have done the transactions that I'm trying to do, that have encountered the issues that I'm going to have. So even if you don't have, even if you're not trying to start a team, let's say of agents, even as a solo agent, you have a team and that team starts out with the connections that you're making and the, and the other professionals that you're aligning with that are gonna be part of your crew, because that's, that's what I call it, I call it my crew. and because these people are going to be the ones that you're going to turn to for problem solving to and also at the end of the day to put these transactions together I mean, unless you're trying to do the title and the mortgage yourself yeah i mean as i was kind of going through the way that this was going to play out in my head as far as what does it mean to have a team i actually was looking at it from two different perspectives on um, one kind of the consumer or really just being a solo agent version. Um, so let's just say you're a consumer and you want to be an investor. A lot of us, you know, in this business want to buy real estate, right? Well, we certainly have our go-to, whether it's lender options, who's going to be doing our title work, our inspections and things of that nature, right? You got to have your team that's going to make sure that you're making a solid investment. And then of course, um, what also, which I believe is a lot of the, this big topic, which is what does it really take to build a team from going from like one agent or one loan officer and you know adding in an admin and turning it into five loan officers or five real estate agents and as a team and then you know where do you kind of fill in those blanks without getting too big too fast and and that's certainly something that you know you've got to be mindful of because anybody that's been in this business for a long time and has had a team probably has changed the way their team works yeah. is structured from where they started you know, and the, let's just say that you're at the team building process for the first two years, well, where are you now, mm -hmm. right? It's probably a big difference. Oh, 100%. And I mean, I think the great reason to start a team is if you're passionate about other people's success. Great leaders are gonna give the credit. So many times I go to a listing appointments with a newer team member and I go there to present, do everything that the listing agent is supposed to do, but I'm nowhere on that listing because I don't want to. I want that newer agent to feel like, hey, I earned this listing. They know why they earned it, because of the team support, and I'm there to be that team support and give them 100% of the credit. I don't, like, but on the other side, when things go wrong, I'm gonna blame myself, and I'm gonna take ownership, and I'm gonna call that client, and I'm gonna tell them, hey, it was my mistake. I'm not gonna let that agent, especially if it's a newer agent, and I'm gonna let them own that mistake. I I'll swallow it, even if, you know, I didn't cook that meal, I'll swallow it. That, that would be a, the good reason. The bad reason is if you wanna treat your team as a luxury versus leverage. And what I mean by that is, if, if I simply wanna just add bodies and make the chaos and just pray that everybody get few deals here and there, I'm, I'll be good, but they won't. Everybody would not even survive if, if they do six sales in a team. But if I have 30 people doing three sales, that's 90 sales, we help 90 families. So basically uh, it would be same like I'm helping personally 45. So that would be the bad reason, in my opinion, if you treat it as a luxury, not to leverage. Yeah, and as far as that bad reason goes, I certainly could say from experience, you don't wanna build a team so that you're actually gonna do less work. Um, you're gonna shift the way you work and you operate. Um, and you may have different versions of how you get to spend your time and you may not be overworked, but you're certainly gonna put in just as much, much work, and especially at the beginning, a lot more work um, also too. You know, um, you're gonna lose people, right? People are going to take your knowledge and they're gonna run for for the, you know, maybe a better opportunity or grass is greener situation and, and 
as much as that often doesn't work out um, in that scenario, they don't, also don't typically come back and, you know, with their tail tucked. That's just not the egos of the world that we live in these days. So, you know, having an expectation that it certainly is always going to require a lot of work. The work may just feel different. Um, and understanding that is a big, big, big part of building a team. I think it builds a lot more work onto your plate. It does. Um, because you have to now, like, for example, I have nine in my team. And I went from three to nine in January. So um, right now, currently, I can say that the ones that are putting 100% effort coming to the office, um, even the ones that, let's say, have second jobs, they're still hustling. They all have something to do. But guess what? All of those deals that they're all working right now, like today, let's say, for example, I have to be the one to review the contract, to tell them how to negotiate, to tell them how to pick up the phone. So I'm constantly sending one voice memo from one text to the next and the next phone call to the next one and this one's calling me. And so I'm doing all those deals with them, but how many more deals am I doing? And then when I have, let's say, three showings at the same time or three meetings at the same time, now I can employ all of us, but guess who's the one who has to answer the phone if they've got a problem at that listing? But it's rewarding because you're watching all these people grow. So the workload, I would say, definitely increases substantially. But it's a, a, a smoother workload because I can feel like, you know, if there's, let's say, 12 transactions going on at the same time, I've got these five, you know, one, two, three, four, five of them are good. Three of them to my assistant, two of them on me, and then two of them on those, you know? so. That's crazy, because if I can be at an inspection, an appraisal, a closing, a showing, two showings, a meeting, writing a newsletter, and writing the contract at the same exact time. There you go. That's what it's bam. all about. That's what a building a team is about. Yeah, it's, sure. it's fun to be a play caller and then see everything unfold, I think, sometimes. But um, I think there's people in the industry that are getting started, maybe don't want to play the calls, but get the instructions. So um, let's talk about, instead of starting... Uh, and forming a team, what are the benefits of joining a team? Well, I think the benefits of joining a team is simply, you know, once you're coming into any industry and you don't know everything involved with the nuances of a transaction and how to navigate through it, um, I think joining a team is the perfect place to be because you get to shadow somebody and be up under them and then also learn how they procure business over time and you could take some of those traits and build off of it so um, I think it's always best to join a team starting out to be honest with you because you don't want to be swimming in a, a big sea of uh, uncertainty when it comes to um, getting into the business so it's always good to have some level of mentorship to help grow your business starting out. I agree with everything Terrell said. I was just gonna say it differently. Um, if you starting a team is going to shorten your learning curve by several years. I, I don't wanna call it a mistake because I don't wanna dwell on my path. I didn't join a team. Um, I kinda just you know started on my own. I don't regret it. But um, I look for example at my, my staff and I see how quickly they learn. And Shannon, for example, many of you in this table know her, she has been with me for, I want to say, almost two and a half years. And I would say in the two and a half years that she has been with me, she has learned what might have taken me close to four or five years. Just because of the fact that she has been able to side by side with me, learn one on one, but also participate, actively participate in the deal making. And that uh, deal making and seeing someone else's work allows you to just pick things up a lot quicker and I actually changed my narrative years ago and, and usually whenever I speak with newer agents now I actually tell them look it may take you some time to find the right team you, you have to do some research you know I mean sometimes you'll find a top producing team but you're not gonna like how they work mm -hmm. so find one that may not be as top producing but it's gonna have Maybe they're the same values as you, or, you know. or maybe they can add more value to that different type of team, right? Because they're not going to just be, you know, this guy. What is this? Who's this extra person hanging around trying to, you know, absorb all of our, yes. you know, hard work, right? So yeah. So I mean, and and, and that's that's important too because you want to, you know, this is a long-term business, and I actually think that realtors don't get 
on their prime until they're maybe two decades into this. <laughs> and so having that right initial mentor could actually mean a lot because you can either learn really good habits from the very beginning that you can even apply in other terms of sales and other terms of entrepreneurship, or you can learn how to do things the wrong way and you're gonna go down that rabbit hole where you're gonna likely end up in the code of ethics violations grievance committee. <laughs> Thousand percent. And I'm gonna be and I'm gonna be there to judge whether you did the right or the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, as far as um, you know, it comes to me in the lending space. I mean, I've been in lending since 2004 when I got into business. Um, and within the first year, I actually had my own shop with a partner. Um, and then I got out of the business, did the real estate and title thing for seven years, and in 2012 went into the big bank business for a while but as soon as i was ready to leave that business again because i really didn't know the business as well as i needed to and honestly there's not a better place to really learn the business and and the nuances of it is then go work for a large bank especially in 2011 2012 we're doing a lot of harp loans so it was just a lot of transactions i got to get my hands on a lot of experience and talking to customers really understanding the nuances of of really what it means to do a mortgage loan that said um since leaving that type of environment in 2014 i've never not been part of a team meaning i joined another team and have built a team underneath that team and so for me that has been really the the key to success in building a team especially since this most recent change i made when i went to cross country which is i went to a one of the biggest producers at cross country and said i have two options here i can go directly under cross country or i can come under you you can make money off me but i want your support, your knowledge, how'd you become this good? And I want to be able to piggyback on that, make, you know, add my own nuance to it. You cool with that? That's gonna work, all right. He's a Jersey guy. I'm in Florida, we do business differently here. Meaning we gotta know our condo. Not that Jersey doesn't have a lot of condo, but different environment for Fannie, sure. Yeah, because Fannie Mae in Florida, and you can, we can go, we can do a whole podcast about this. It's, it's <laughs> we can do a condo podcast for it's, sure. <laughs> it's significantly different than the rest of the United States. It is. In terms of LTV ratios, I mean, it's. it's yeah, I mean, really, we are the redheaded stepchild of condo when it comes to all the 50 states. Um, we have different requirements and um, it's completely, but let's not get off subject. The point is, is team, joining a team certainly doesn't mean you're not going to have your own team at some point. And I think that that is really just a great thing to get a feel for is that team up with someone that is going to want to see you so successful that they care less about how much money you're making off of them and more about what you're going to do from a success standpoint, you know, so. Mate, what you got? Well, I'm actually someone who joined the team, and I, and I was strategically interviewing a few teams, and I was looking for the person that his strengths were my weaknesses. And we supplement each other so well. And I, I, and I set expectations. I said from the beginning, eventually I want to become a partner. And that happened after three years in 2019. And because of that team and because of the mentorship and because of the support, I literally went from zero in 2016 to top 1% in 2019. That was the first time I got into top 1%. And a uh, majority of that credit goes to the person that I partner with and the team. And on the good days, bad days, I got support. And what you really remember is on the bad days when you think like everything is going south. So I agree with, uh, with Marcelo, values are important, also systems. And also understanding how how can this team supplement me and my habits because quite frankly I'm I'm, I'm chaos like I'm not organized <laughs> I'm not systematic person like the honesty I yeah. like that, yeah. <laughs> uh, my my partner is super systematic super uh, su super patient he's a great coach and supplements like tremendously so I always when people ask me like what do you look into partnership and it's one of the seven habits of highly successful people being in interdependent like we can be dependent independent and then interdependent that's where the real success is when you know how to be interdependent and how to know you know what are your weaknesses what are your strengths and how can we supplement each other so we both succeed on the higher level brilliant donnie you're gonna say something of course <laughs> <laughs> what a silly question <laughs> so um when my teammates come obviously you have to give them the value add 
And what I tell them is, listen, I have made a recipe, I've put it in the oven, I've baked it, and people like it. So if I can give you this plug and play recipe and give you these systems, and furthermore, invest in you, because that's what I do, um, I provide a lot of value. And I feel like when you're looking for a team leader or you're looking to join a team, you want to know what's in it for you. And so when I have interviews from people who have experience, people who don't have experience, I tell them, like, listen, at the end of the day, like, we want to grow. We want to be something. And if you can create an environment that they feel they can be a part of something, hey, everybody in this world, in this room, wants to be a part of something. Why do you think we're here at this podcast? And why are you listening right now? It's because you want to be a part of this, right? So you inspire each other and furthermore you lean on each other so when you have a team it's like right now i have one of my agents that's in the bahamas and she's like hey on saturday i gotta show something i have five million appointments on saturday i can't do a virtual showing but hey that person can and i got your back when you got it when you need it i got you and you got an inspection you can't be there in a photo shoot don't you worry and that is why you join a team for the collective exponential value of nine people in a room or nine people on the field at the same time yeah that's that and team then, winner you gotta be and ready then to do it too right you inspire them that we're all working for this goal like can you imagine no not that can you imagine but wait until you see that we become the top real estate team in miami and that's what we're gonna be and we're gonna be diamond and when you get that energy in that room and you fuel those people they want it and they will do it and they will work it and they want to be part of that team oh you motivated me i'm getting my real estate license now. bam <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've talked a lot about a lot of victories, but um, you know, with victories sometimes come an L or two. So let's talk about some of the growing pains you've experienced personally when starting a team. Just what you think, man? Oh man, I could have made it like a whole page of notes yeah. about the pains. <laughs> just uh, one, just, just one. one. Um, I think the biggest pain point is understanding that not everyone is as loyal as you are. Um, you will certainly get your heart broken, um, especially if you're someone like myself who believes in loyalty in a sense of, listen, you can communicate with me. You can come to me about anything. You can, and listen, I'll certainly, you know, wish you well and and tell you that, you know, I, I want you to do well if you decide that you're going to go do something um, and it's for your betterment. But usually it's not about something that simple. It's because of a dollar or two and it really only took a conversation and they got sold by someone else thinking that they're gonna have this much better world um, without ever coming to communicate. Um, and that's something that I have dealt with not once and not twice, but, but more than that. Um, that said, you know, you learn a lot from that particular scenario. Um, one, about how to manage people, about also to how to identify that type of person sooner than later and make sure that you know, your best, your investment still stays the same as far as attention, approach with that individual, and understand that they, if they are an integral part of your team, meaning if they turn a specific dial and everything else moves, and if without them, not everything else is moving, you're going to have a problem. And so understanding that pain point, whenever that, when the clock stops, we've got a problem. So knowing that Everyone's got to be able to fill in at least enough to make sure the clock keeps ticking. That, for me, has been the, re the result of that pain point. I think the biggest growing pain that I would say is, like, one, deciphering through, um, you know, the people that, you know, approach you that want to be a part of your team because I'm sure that everybody that's sitting at this table, we've had some level of success. So people who see that from afar, they want to see, you know, well, they want to be a part of, you know, that success in the terms of some people want just the money. And for me, um, I think my biggest thing was discerning like, OK, well, who's really here to grow and develop as an agent as opposed to who's here to make some money? Um, and you spoke about something earlier where you said, you know, some people will leave you and that's completely fine. You know, I've had agents that start their own brokerage and everything like that. That's kind of what you want to happen. You want somebody to grow within the industry where they can kind of stand on their own two feet and they don't have to, you know, rely on you solely for a long period of time. I encourage that, actually, you know. Um, you know, I keep getting motivated by continuously being able to touch other people in the market and help them grow and be groomed throughout the market so they can have a, um, 
you know, a fruitful uh, career in real estate. So when you talk about like the growing pains as far as, you know, starting a team, it's more so being decisive on like the type of person that you're allowing in your space. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I would say getting emotional and really getting attached to people and uh, not all of them want to succeed at the level that you want them to succeed. Uh, and I mean, c- culture supersede everything in our world. Like, if you don't stick to our culture, and one of them is being loyal, honest, putting always families first, so sellers, buyers, renters, investors, you name it, they are top of the chain. They have to be the first. No one else, like your paycheck is not even the second. Like, we have to really take care of people. Uh, bypassing the hiring process and not really going deep into that interview, not asking for references, that's all extra work. Like, and when you give me three references, I'm not calling those three people. I'm calling those three people and I'm asking each of them, hey, who are the three people that also knows this person? Because naturally you're gonna give me three, if, if you want, if you're coming into our world, you're gonna give me three people that you know are gonna really be your raving fans. They're gonna say like, Justin is amazing. I want to also talk with people that you didn't necessarily give me names. So I'm going to ask them, hey, who are other people that I can reach out to that know Justin from maybe the same environment you work? Mm-hmm. And and just keeping that, like we burn ourselves like a few times. We, we just didn't do our homework and it's our fault. And then also if you see someone is not showing up, keeping them in the environment too long is going to show let's say Marcelo, who is showing up every single day and grinding and working, I was like, oh, well, this person is not showing up. Why am I killing myself? And they're still here, right? If yeah. they so don't show up, they're they don't the, give they're, them they're gonna things, be on the, They're going right? to be on the black That's what list. I say. Like, yeah. listen, no, it's not about that. If you're in the office, my phone rings. I get leads. If you're there, you're going to get them. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're not there, People what? that are present are it's getting okay. rewarded. And we I think it's okay. Well, for us, we are as strong as our weakest link. Right. So we want to be. It certainly could turn into to toxicity, right? I mean, it depends yeah. on what your culture is, and your culture is different. My and culture I think is they, supportive, right? But right? also, too, I think that the point <clears> is, is that if your culture says that, hey, listen, you do have an ex, we have an expectation of you showing up on specific days for specific yep. hours or for certain meetings or whatever it is, then you're certainly expected to be there, right? I mean, I think that that's one thing. I think that I think it's a different environment of course if you have a, yeah. an approach where listen i know this person is going to bring in bring in customers are going to bring in clients and that's a different type of setting it right, comes altogether. in seasons right because people have experiences and people have their things they have to take care of so you know sometimes one person may be the heavy lead getter the next person you know the next week it might be them it might be you it, it it's all depends but i need support that's the end of that is what it is at the end of the day and if i'm getting these leads in this office and you're sitting right next to me you're gonna get that and if you're not it's okay it's fine it's not a big deal right there's plenty to go around but growing pains for me it's more like I have such a good way with my clients and I have trouble giving them away. Oh yeah, (laughs) trust. Because I feel, (laughs) like like, I just want to do everything. If I could just do everything, it would just be great. Like I tell my clients all the time, like if I could do it, trust me, you wouldn't have this problem or hurdle or whatever. Let it go. Perfection. Let it go. Let it go. (laughs) Sing it to me. I need that, yes. But I'm getting better at that. Mm -hmm. Marcel, how about you, man? I don't have problems. He's <laughs> perfect, man. Come yeah, on. J- drop that mic. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> but look, it, I don't have the problems that. I'm, you have to keep in mind that the way my team is set up is different. So the growing pain for me was creating something from scratch that was not something that is the usual norm in the industry. Some people go as far as saying that I don't have a team. I think I have a team. Other colleagues of mine say, no, you do have a team. but. Keep in mind that my team basically comprises of me, and then I have staff. Uh, I have a full-time uh, assistant and coordinator. I have a part-time, um, also part-time assistant who helps me with marketing, with videos, with postcards, and she has her own set of responsibilities. And then I do have a freelance graphic designer who works on a project basis, who basically assists us with 
anything regarding our e-blast that we send via MailChimp or anything that's related to, again, the postcards and he takes care of you know, preparing the, the routes, uh, our logos, uh, our flyers, things of that nature, it, our social media marketing as well. So I, the training was probably the biggest challenge knowing what to delegate at the time. Thankfully, when I decided to do what I did, I had enough time to create that vision because it happened in 2020 during the pandemic. So I had a little bit of extra time where if I wasn't playing on my PS4 and waiting for <laughs> Florida realtors to do their good deed and make us essential workers, I, I started, you know, I would grab a pen and I would start drafting, okay, what if I can somehow stay in the front and be the realtor still doing the showings, but can I hypothetically have maybe a set of people behind me and I can forward the phone so that I couldn't miss the incoming leads that I kept missing because I was out doing showings? And can I also train them to do form simplicity and draft the paperwork so that I don't have to come back to the office at night and basically prepare the paperwork for everything that I did during the day and third, can I also have someone hold a camera for me? Because I do like doing videos and, and it is good for social media. So that was the foundation at the time. And then it just came down to a matter of, okay, well, I need to, I need to refine the vision a little more. And then you learn the growing pains of payroll tax. And, <laughs> and now you have to do you know, W-2s and you have to pay that payroll tax and you learn as you go, but you also get to share this experience with people. And it is reassuring to an extent because although I do sometimes could be a little harsh <coughs> and it, it is, I mean, any team leader can relate to this. You have to, it, it, you are your biggest enemy at the same time because I am the mood setter. So if I don't come in with the right attitude, um, everything's gonna, you know, I am the strongest and the weakest link at the same time. Right. And, and so, so I'm, the, I'm the growing pain. I'm, I'm the one that, <laughs> you know, I'm the problem child. And then my staff has to basically put up with me. Well, you said it before, you're, you're I mean, a uh, Jew that's chaos, right? So, <laughs> sounds like you're, you got a lot of, lot of things in common. Right? Correct. <laughs> nice, so um, sometimes a tool is sometimes what helps you with that growing pain. Um, so let's talk about tools that are best for teams. What tools uh, that you've personally used uh, that have helped you and have been a huge game changer? Mate, why do you start, man? I can start because he's not ready. Ladies first. <laughs> so the Google Drive is my best friend. <laughs> I just got you. Okay. <laughs> Google Drive, folders, team folders, scripts, Win Windows photos, <laughs> whatever. It works. And you know what? You just put all the systems, all the scripts, all the checklists, everything. It's there. The videos, bam, bam, bam. Google Drive. That's my favorite tool. I'd say a CRM um, for multiple reasons, um, for organization, but um, you know, client retention, and you know, also you know, team accountability to make sure that the leads that you're delegating down to your agents, that they're actually handling them in a proper way, and you can actually see it. Um, from the top, like you see if they're texting them, what are they saying in those text messages, the responses from those clients as well. Um, and then you always can jump in as the team leader because you know exactly what stage they're in. Um, so I think CRM is big um, when, you know, as far as a tool for, for teams. Which one do you use? Follow up boss. I just got KV Core with Remax, so I just got it. It's, it's <laughs> not sorry. good, so okay, it's good. That's why we're having this conversation because we yeah. want to learn, right? You got you got Follow Up Boss, you got Chime. It's a it's a lot of more robust systems. He told me about Brevity. Yeah, uh, Brevity, it's tremendous. It's yeah. like top of the line. Yeah, so it's a few, man. They all pretty much are the same. They have all have limitations to some to some degree, um, but you know, there's workarounds where you can do levels of automation with Zapier and stuff like that to make it a little bit more robust. But yeah, I mean, I, this I, CRM thing is certainly a what fits you in your type of business. I mean, for example, I don't use a CRM. You know, no, no, no. really. I mean, I know. I, I don't have a. a I, real I, I was friend. ready to say that because <laughs> I knew it was gonna shock everyone in this state. Okay, yeah. okay. I have a realtor friend who doesn't either, and all he uses is. Apple's contact, and he does all of his mailing through con through Apple, right through his Apple computer. He does absolutely everything right through Apple, 
and including all of his, every transaction goes into one of those notes. And he and his team all have shared notes. iPhone is his tool. That's his, that's his tool. Wow. He literally that's just cool. uses the iPhone. My, Microsoft Outlook. I love oh. Outlook myself. <laughs> like I love say, Outlook. But I mean, Microsoft the, versus the majority iPhone. of the majority of people only use maybe ten percent of Microsoft Outlook. I, I mean, agree. there's a contact you can you can export all your contacts, you can import all your contacts. There's they made the super robust now. The scheduling that Outlook has, I think, is way better than anything any other software, including Apple. I mean, Outlook basically runs my life in terms of schedule. Like, if it's not on the Outlook schedule, then I'm not doing so it. So you're using OneDrive also, right? <laughs> Instead of the G, the um, G Drive, is that so right? G Drive, yeah. For, drive. for storage, we use Dropbox. And Dropbox. We use Dropbox. And then for, we use Dropbox for transaction purposes in terms of folders for paperwork. On listings, we include pictures as well. We have folders for new development, social media content. Um, but my favorite tool, and I just have to say it, is you go on your phone. Showing time. And you go call forwarding, and you can forward your cell phone so that when calls come in, it can just go to anyone else. And as I know it sounds stupid, but this has that's been a, the biggest. That's a great game, tool. This has been my game, the biggest game changer because the moment I am out of the office and out doing showings, one of the first things that I do is forward my cell phone over to the office or to my staff now I know that I have the peace of mind that I can have this conversation with you right now and I can make this podcast and I can give you my full undivided attention cool I like that, that. that the with phone's that not gonna said, ring my phone is on blast and I'm gonna I'm gonna take that note from yeah. you that's right uh, yes. uh, I, I, I would new say people I, need to pick up phones I mean, on Friday night when I'm on the, when I'm on the showing I, I am there I'm there to answer the questions I don't have to worry about the, the, the missing leads and then by the time I'm done with the showing, hey Shannon or hey Michelle, did I miss anything? Mm. I love it. I, I think w whichever system you use, if it's serving you well, go for it. But for me personally, it's important that every agent partner and en any person in operation use the same system. So God forbid something happened to me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? All 150 something people that I personally served in the last few years, they're going to be taken care of because every interaction is there, every message is there, every email that I send them from my Gmail account is syncing to the CRM, so they can even see that in the CRM. Uh, I mean, auto plans are just amazing. Like tomorrow, I'm doing an open house. You come to Cutler Bay one to three as soon as you leave at three fifteen. That CRM is going to send you a text message. Hey, thank you for coming to our open oh, house. Very cool. mm -hmm. And nice. then it's going to remind me to call you on Monday to ask you for the feedback. And it's going to send you all the listings in that area automatically just because you sign up yeah. and you came to our open house. And I'm going to track. And even if you have an agent, hey, no problem. Give me your agent number. I want to help you. I don't care if you have an agent because why? I know we're going to help that family in Cutler Bay, but then probably we're going to generate one or two more listing opportunities. And if you're a kind person like you are, I'll reach out to your agent and I'm telling them, hey, we, we have this coming soon. Is this and this family still interesting? Are they still buying or they already purchased? Mm -hmm. All right. Because it, it doesn't have to, I don't have to have any benefits, but CRM is there to remind me and to literally record every single interaction we have throughout the years. You know, um, and kind of to your point and, you know, the CRM, I love our CRM, but I've gone through lots of CRMs that I can always, I always end back, end up back with pipe drive, um, only because it's just the way drive. it looks at the I way I just it discovered moves. it this week. It's, it's amazing. amazing. <laughs> and it's gotten only better over the years, mm -hmm. but I would say really the most useful tool in my business, hands down is WhatsApp. Um, every single customer, whether they've been pre-approved or they're just a lead gets a WhatsApp conversation with my team mm -hmm. and their realtor. So every single update and every single thing that's going on in the transaction is sent with a personal reminder directly through WhatsApp because you got WhatsApp right on your computer if you're one of my uh, loan partners or assistants, whatever you may, whatever they may be, and they're constantly being updated. You have documents you need to sign. You've now got this. We need to set up your success consult. That's next. That's your next step. Uh, are you available tomorrow at 2 p.m.? Are you available tomorrow morning at 9 a.m.? WhatsApp for me has been the by and far the biggest game changer because now I know it doesn't work in a lot of markets because we're in Florida and everyone uses it, um, especially in South Florida. And I think that there's it's more of an east, you know, northeast and um, South Florida 
Texas, California thing. But that said, that's where the majority of our business is, right? I find that to be by and far the most useful tool. All right. So let's get a little vulnerable now. We already kind of touched upon it a little bit. So if you want to be more specific here, uh, by all means. And if you want to recluse yourself from this conversation, I completely respect that. <laughs> I recluse that. myself. I'm just kidding. <laughs> completely understand. Um, so what mistakes have you made while building your team so maybe our viewers won't make the same mistakes? Not recording activities and actions. Like we started doing all the trainings on YouTube. We didn't do that before. So instead of teaching one-on-one, -on -one, every single person, you take your time, you record it once, mm -hmm. and voila, it's done. I mean, if we're, if we're getting vulnerable, the, the, the biggest one, I mean, monetarily, I mean, look, I, we all made mistakes. So monetarily, it was probably not opening up my S-Corp. <laughs> but that is applicable whether you have a team right. or not. But we already we already spoke earlier that whether you have showing agents or not, you do have a team because you are surrounded by other individuals or vendors that are going to help you with your business. That monetarily was probably my biggest one. Um, I learned that very quickly, and, and you know, thankfully now I have a good CPA, you know, help me take care of these things. But the second one, and this is a continuous. This is just going to happen no matter what, and it's going to keep ch and it keeps changing as you grow as a person. Is you want not aligning with the right people that you want to do business with, mm -hmm. not maybe maybe not having the right title agent or not having the right lender for that specific situation. So, I mean, to, to your point, you know, we spoke off camera and and before the podcast, and I look forward to getting to know you better because even though I have great lenders, you may be there and they may be extremely good at what they do. You may be the right lender for that other customer that might be coming in because you might just happen to have the right demeanor or the right product that the other loan officers may not have. And therefore, it's like baseball. I mean, you know, I mean, you can have the best, you can have the best pitcher on your team, but if he's not a closer and, or he's tired and you're on the ninth inning, you need to bring that closer in to, to close out the game. And it's not that the first pitcher was bad, it's just that he already threw a hundred times and you need to do a change. So not finding, you wanna get to know people better and you want to find that people that even subconsciously are gonna have that same vision you have of how you like to run things. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're running the same way too. And you just don't know it yet. I, I hope er everybody paying attention to Marcelo right now because whoever we refer, that's extension of us, and that's our team, our electrician, our plumber, our insurance agent. Not, you know, lenders, titles are extremely important, but make sure you create and you really weed out good people in different professions, because people that, especially people that are coming here, they're looking at us as a resource, as like, hey, this is my connector. So, uh, hey, and if I don't have a good landscaper, I'm gonna say, hey, I don't know anyone, but I am gonna find out. And I'm gonna reach out to another agent and I'm gonna ask them, hey, who provided five-star experience for you when it comes to landscaping? And create your list. And if you refer them, guess what? They're a reflection of you. Because yeah. if, if they don't have the, or the right experience working with that person that you refer, that's going to reflect, it, it could potentially reflect badly on you, even if it's not something that you did yourself. But guess yeah. what? You're the one that recommended this individual or this business, so I've, I've been need over time, I mean, thankfully, you know, God bless, it hasn't happened often, but there's been circumstances where I've had to make changes and say, you know what, I cannot work with this person anymore, I'm gonna have to start working with this person. And, and, and we wanna support other business owners, and many of them are gonna offer you some kickback, and whenever they do that, I said, hey, I don't need anything, I just do good for this person, because it's already gonna make me good. Yep. But when you do come across someone that is looking to sell, buy, invest, I expect you. So I set those expectations as well. I, I don't need everything yet. I'm sending you someone because I trust in you. You're a great person and I want to help you build your business or keep your business running. But, you know, reciprocity, we spoke about that earlier. Naturally, you don't even have to ask them it. Like after first, second time, you don't have to ask them. People are going to start sending you business, even though they know gazillion other realtors. Yeah, absolutely. So my team is new, so mistakes not made yet. <laughs> well, 
maybe no 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 we're good we're good but i do learn from others mistakes and so i see a lot of so very successful team leaders in my office and the one thing that i think they make the mistake of is that they don't treat their people well i love to spoil my people i love to take care of them i'm generous i want to give them more and i feel like when you cap people and you don't support them and you don't give them that extra mile that's when you're gonna they're gonna leave because yeah. i've been lucky enough listen I, i've had a team of three for a year and a half and now i'm at a team of nine it's been a couple months and all of them are still there so nobody's dropped off just yet and that's because i tell them listen if you grow and you become super successful and at one point you don't need me and you want to go somewhere i don't want that because i want our collective volume to be that we want to be on that pinnacle of success so if you grow you grow and we will amend the agreements that we have now. So the one mistake that I feel like you should not do is forget that people need to be rewarded. I've always been very generous. I'm a very good tipper. So I kind of treat that the same way in my business. And people say, you're too nice. You treat them to too, to too much. You're too friendly. Well, hey, that's my culture and that's why I still have my team. And I hope that they stay and I'll do everything for them to stay. So that's kind of like the mistake that I don't want you to make is for you to forget about that because people are just say, oh no, my cut is my cut and this is how it is and go slave work. Yeah, Not like that, maybe. The, numbers, right? N the money, people. you see? Yeah. The greedy yeah. money. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. To me, it's about we're building something together. Yeah. Don't make the mistake of losing that. Um, as far as, I mean, mistakes, certainly, again, there's been plenty of them. But, you know, for me, it was hiring too quickly and not hiring the right way. Um, mostly in the sense of I didn't do enough homework when I took one position or one platform, I should say, um, which was my previous one prior to moving across country. And I just took on too many people. I didn't hire them the right way, meaning no personality tests. What do I want this person's role to actually be? Where do I want them to be long term? And how many of these do I really need? Um, what they promise of this, you know, beautiful, shiny present that was coming with this quote unquote quote unquote great relationship I was going to have um, with this particular um, group or partnership, which really ultimately didn't pan out. But that said, for one, be weary of any type of partnerships that you go into. Two, don't hire too quickly. It's much easier to find a need, be overworked and look for that need and really identify it and really take your time on hiring the right person that's going to be the right fit. Um, and that's honestly been my number one learning lesson um, in, in hiring. Yeah, my biggest mistake was, you know, hiring out of pain, you know. Um, <laughs> right. When you're super overwhelmed and, you know, you just want to grab anybody closest to you, like just help, you know. Um, you know, I think that was one of my biggest mistakes. And then also, you know, seeing – sometimes seeing something for people more than they can see it for themselves in a sense where you kind of let certain things exist within your team setting um you talked about like you know sometimes people not making it to certain things that are mandatory um that you think are you know really beneficial for them to learn and grow in a business and you kind of let those things slide but it accumulates over time and then it, what it does is it creates also a culture where other agents in the in the group may start thinking that it's okay not to just come to these things but those those trainings and those times where you're taking time out of your business to you know, pouring to other people, you want them to be, you know, brought in on that. So, you know, just like I would say in a mistake that I made in the past, and you get better at it over time is addressing certain things at the door and you're not letting it fester over time. So that would be my biggest mistake that I've made in the past. So, so not ignoring red flags, make sure there is a, a team standard because we want everybody. You go to Chick-fil-A, you say thank you, everybody going to tell you what. My yeah. pleasure. Yeah, mm -hmm. my pleasure. Exactly. I don't know. There's no Chick Fil A in Miami Beach. That's okay. I can't. I can't relate. But they all gonna say relate. my pleasure. And and one big mistake that uh, we definitely made is partnering with agents that don't have at least three months of uh, reserves in their account. Mm -hmm. Why? Because as an agent, you don't start making money immediately. Like doesn't matter. You come to our office and first day you start making thousand dials every single day. It's gonna take you some time to get and to get your first commission check. So make sure at least to have three to six months of uh, reserves in their bank account, because otherwise we're not setting them up for success. It does take time. 
who succeed in real estate. Do you ask them though how much money you got? Can I get Absolutely, I asked. I asked them straight up. Give me your paycheck. Let me give you your bank account. Give me all your money. Give me your pin number. Why you're at? Give me your latest. I'm gonna hold on to this for you. No, what is your carrying cost a month? So basically, how does how much it costs you to give your life every single month? And do you have more than three months in your account? That's great. You don't have to give me. You don't have to give me exact number. And I tell them the reason why we asked it, because hey, this this is how this business works, mm. and these are just expectations. Because I don't want to get into the third month, and I have someone sweating next to me because they don't know how they're gonna pay the bill. Mm -hmm. It's my fault I allowed it. That's how I see it. Yeah. If that's the case, hey, better go get a job. Build up that reserve. Luckily, this country offers so many. I remember as an immigrant, I always worked two, three jobs until I start doing real estate full time. You can make money in this country if you choose to, and you can save money if you choose to. But allowing someone to enter in your world without reserves is really, it's my fault if I allowed it. Right. <laughs> I was going to say just real quick, countless times I've had someone, you know, want to approach this business, right, whether it's mortgage or it's real estate. And... Um, they'll often say, well, I really think I want to be a realtor. Like, I would love to just, you know, drive around and show houses. And I'm like, well, that's that's great. That's absolutely something I would never want to do. It's just not my personality. <laughs> but that said, if you do want to be a realtor, the bigger question is, is how long can you afford to be broke? Because you're not going to be making money for a long time. It is not turnkey. You're not, no one's just going to hand you the key to the castle in the, in the real estate business. And it's not that easy, not in anything in life, but there's certainly are jobs where you can actually make money immediately. So yeah. then it's not real estate, you know. O only 87% failure rate within two years, 87%. Uh, they keep renewing their licenses. Why don't we get rid of them? <laughs> hey, bring them, bring them on. Bring them on. Hey, Miami Realtors, oh, sorry, we're happy. Miami happy for you to be part of the family. <laughs> but um, hey, guys, thank you so much for being vulnerable. Um, I wanted to ask Mate before we go. Um, you use place. Um, I should have brought this under talking point number four, but I wanted to talk about it at the end. Um, what are your thoughts on place? Is it good for teams? Uh, tell us a little bit about it for the people that don't know. So number one, place is brokerage agnostic, which means it's a platform that uh, partner with top teams in the country and individuals who wants to build a team. They do have requirements, yet they have every single thing that uh, you need to succeed in this business. And they have the best practices uh, from teams that are doing massive business. And when I say massive business, they are helping over 1,000 families a year as a team. And we're talking about 30 agent team. So average agent in that team is helping 30 plus families a year, which is a great living for that agent. And also they're providing a great service. I mean, they, from technology, training, coaching, uh, accounting, uh, legal, marketing, anything you can imagine, they have it. And uh, it's really there to make you better not only de to develop you as a, in production, but also to develop you as a person. They talk about the building wealth a lot. Uh, they, they do offer a ton of resources. And I, I mean, I could, we have been in a dating mode with them for over two years. So it wasn't immediately first one night stand. It, it was quite a journey. And in August, it's going to be two years of partnership and couldn't be happier, to be honest. Very cool. Fun fact, my dream was to earn six figures. A place actually offered me a six-figure job last year. And um, I it. love you guys so much, I turned it down. No joke. <laughs> no joke. So, um, so you got a raise. I, no, no. no well, I did, I, no, not, uh, not for that. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about my finances. I didn't even tell my boss about it, to be honest. This I'm, is the first I'm, time. I'm, 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 I've told a few other people that. but I, I'm disappointed right now. Well, I'm here with you. I'm not. But, um, you know, if you want to give Here me a comes raise, the raise. More than one person. <laughs> hey, as long as it's your We're happy place, fine. that's all that matters. Right, right. This is this is what matters to me. I believe in you guys. I believe in Miami YPN. And, mm. and what we've created has been unbelievable. And, hey, honestly, we're in Q2 now. Our, our first quarter was, uh, like, unreal. And um, we are attracting. We're creating something powerful. And uh, I still cannot wait to see what Miami YPN grows into. So with that... 
Please join our ambassador program if you want to get more involved with Miami YPN. All it costs is $50 with your YPN Pro membership. And we'd love to show you what we're all about. So with that, I think we got to conclude. This has been a fantastic episode. Hopefully you watching at home realize that, hey, maybe you need to form a team. Or, hey, maybe a team's not for you. That's what this podcast is all about. So until next time, be great, everyone. And if you want to form a team, talk to these people. The way to do it is just reach us at Miami YPN or YPNglobal.com. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you at the next podcast. Different